Hello guys, good evening. And thank you very much for joining today, right? Today we have our session number 10, and we're going to begin with the, um, well, we're going to continue actually with a topic which is passive voice, but also we are going to be resolving some doubts that some of you have, right, about the platform, okay? And I'll be more than glad to uh, go ahead and, um, res uh, you know, resolve them, right? No problem. Give me one moment. One sec. Give me a second. Estoy contestando a uno de ustedes. One second. Ahí está. Alguien más que haya tenido dificultades, solo estoy sacando aquí los ejercicios. Let me see. We have the first one is. Bueno, de hecho no me mandaron los números, solo me mandaron una, una captura. Yo necesito los números. Ah, aquí sí. Five. Ese era el último, es el último ejercicio del de final exam. El último ejercicio del final exam sería letra. Ah, es que es el 4, o sea, toda la sección 4 del final exam, sí que Ah, section 4. ¿Y y están por números, chicos, o están por Bueno, ya voy a abrir aquí yo la plataforma. Permítanme. Then we have 5.2, exercise 2, 5 and 7, dice. 5.2 2 5 and seven. And then knowledge check. Okay. Pero knowledge check de qué de qué sección? ¿Será la cinco siempre? Siempre de ese mismo. Ah, okay. Sí. Okay. Muy bien. Y me decían que el de la captura de pantalla es, perdón, siempre del ejercicio cuatro, perdón, de la sección cuatro. Es no, es the final exam. Va. Ok. Solo que, vamos a ver si no se traba un poquito. Okay. Me hay que pasar por todo para que nos mande al final exam. ¿Qué sección sería del, del final exam? Oh. That would be A, B, C, D, right? C. Yes. Okay. Yes. C. Okay. Bye. I was typing with one hand only. Very good. So, yeah, those exercises are kind of tricky and it is understandable, right, that we're having problems with them. I'm going to explain the topic, obviously, but for the ones that um, want to complete um, everything. So don't worry, I will go ahead and explain it. Um, at, at least the answers right now, not the topic, right, because actually we haven't gotten there, but I can uh, go ahead and clarify doubts. No problem. Okay, here we go. Very good. So over here in the um, final exam in section C, right, it is asking us to join the sentences, okay? So to do that, we need to go ahead and use, right, some of the um, pronouns that we have there. It says instructions, join the sentences with who or that. Make any changes where needed. For example, T 
TBIT sitcoms features, oh, I'm going to go here. TBIT sitcoms feature actors. They are recognized by viewers around the world. So here we have two things, okay? We have TV sitcoms that feature actors and also they are, these actors are recognized by viewers around the world, right? So in this case, to put it together, all what I need to do is to select which is the best one that I need. Now, who is for people, okay? especially for people, right? Uh, and then we have also that, which is for things, and you can use it for people too. Now, if we pull the two sentences together, we get TV sitcoms feature actors who are recognized by viewers around the world, right? So in this case, we are putting these two sentences together by using who. Why? Because I am specifying who the person is, okay? Bear with me, I'm just going to open here my PDF. Where is it, the manual, manual, aquí está, okay? Very good, then another example, a newspaper clerk has to do a lot of research. He or she is often new to journalism. A newspaper clerk, who is often new to journalism has to do a lot of research, okay? So in that case, all what we have to do is to make the necessary changes as the instructions, you know, uh, ask you. Now, what are we doing here? Well, pretty much we're doing um, defining and non-defining clauses, right? And that information can be found in your manual. Right. So in the grammar focus section, it explains a little bit about this topic. OK, we have the defining relative clauses and defining relative clauses are used to identify people. For example, a dialect coach is a language specialist. She works with actors under accents. A dialect coach is a language specialist who or that works with actors on their accents. So as you can see, I mean, what is the relation that we can have? ¿Cómo yo puedo relacionar, teacher, esto con lo que yo hago dentro de la oración? Well, what I can do is that I can say the word defining. Porque la misma palabra dice defining, o sea, está definiendo qué es eso. Entonces, if you see, what I'm doing is defining what a dialect coach do, um, does, right? So who is a dialect coach? Oh, a dialect coach is a language specialist who or that works with actors under accents, right? So in that case, we have a definition. We're kind of defining, estamos definiendo qué es eso. And then we have the non-defining relative clauses. The non-defining relative clauses get further information about people. Listen, further information about people. Okay. O sea, está dando mucho más información, probablemente de lo que debería. For example, a location scouts finds places to shoot scenes, right? A location scout finds places to shoot scenes. He travels all over the world, right? So here we have more information probably than what we need. And we say a location scout who finds places to shoot scenes travels all over the world, right? So in that case, we are given a, a, uh, extra information. Now, teacher, what is the difference between the first one and the second one? Well, in this case, right, the first sentence, as you can see, do not contain any type of commas. And we only have the final, I mean, the, the, the full stop here for the period, right? And then in the second example, we have commas because we are including extra information, right? Further information, o sea, más información, ¿verdad? And that information goes between commas, in between commas. A location scout, hasta ahí lo puedo dejar, o travels or over the world, or a location scout who finds places to shoot scenes, travels all over the world, okay? 
So in this case, it says do these sentences contain defining? So D or non-defining and D clauses add commas to the non-defining clauses they compare with a partner. So I think it's part of what you were doing here. So that, those are the two types of clauses that we're doing, okay? Now, in the first one, right, we have a gaffer has to carry out the lighting designed. He or she works on a movie or TV crew, okay? So what do you think, okay, it's the type of um, clause that we need here? How can we can we begin? Any idea, guys? Any idea? A gaffer have to carry. Okay, a gaffer. Uh huh. What else? Los que ya contestaron. Anyone? Okay, I will give you the answer then. So the answer for this one is the following. A gaffer who works on a movie TV crew has to carry out the lighting design, right? A gaffer who works on a movie TV crew has to carry out the lighting design. So what is this, guys? Is, it, is this a defining or non-defining clause? Non-defining clause. Very non-defining clause. Non clause. Mm -hmm, exactly. It's a non-defining clause, right? So I'm going to take all the info here and I'm going to put it here, right? Now, the next one, dialogue editor, editors, I'm sorry, are sound technicians. They specialized in editing film scripts. So what do you think it's the right um sentence that we need here there are more than one i mean there is more than one option i must have one option de hecho chicos mm -hmm. any idea no dialogue editors that specialize in editing film scripts mm -hmm. very good Excellent. So in that case, we have three different options. We can say dialogue editors are sound technicians who specialize in editing film scripts or dialogue editors are sound technicians that specialize in editing film scripts, right? And the last one is kind of the same, okay? So that is the only option. You can use who or that, okay? Let's go ahead and use this one, okay? What about the next one? A property master is responsible for buying props. They are handled by actors. Sorry, I'm going to move this here. Mm -hmm. Anyone? No worries, I can go ahead and help you, okay? So in this case, it's um, it's very uh, easy because we already have an idea on how we will go ahead and be. A property master, master is responsible for buying props that are handled by the actors. That, because we're talking about objects, we're not talking specifically about people, right? So a property master is responsible for buying props that are handled by actors, okay? Very good. So we're going to take this one and we're going to add it over here, okay? Now, critics were write film reviews, right? they sometimes see more than 10 new movies a week, okay? So what do you think it's the right answer? Here we have more than one, hay más de una. Anyone? No worries, okay? So in this case, we have uh, two options, okay? We have the first option and I will show it to you. Critics, and then 
you know, we have a non-defining clause. This one is a defining clause, remember. So over here, we have a defining clause, right? This one, this one is a non-defining clause. Critics who sometimes see more than 10 movies a week write film reviews or critics that sometimes see more than 10 movies a week write film reviews, okay? So in that case, you can use either or, o la una o la otra, right? And what about the last one? Executive pro uh, producers aren't involved in shooting a film. They are responsible for the budget. So what do you think it's the answer for that one? Anyone? The executive producer mm -hmm. who are responsible mm -hmm. for the budget. Budget. Budget producer and inviting in shooting a bill. Very good. Excellent. That is correct. And that one is this, right? It's a uh, non-defining clause, right? Executive producers, comma, who are responsible for the budget, comma, aren't involved in shooting a film. Or executive producers that are responsible for the budget are involved in shooting a film, okay? So, and then I'm going to copy one here and we're going to include it, okay. Okay, and there you go. You have all the right answers, all the right answers, okay. Any questions, al menos por, para los que ya habían llegado por ahí, do you have still any questions? No, I understand. Excellent, very good. Clear, teacher. Okay, no problem. Y para los demás que no han llegado Thank por you. ahí, you're welcome, ya saben. Para los que no han llegado por ahí, no worries, porque también vamos a explicar el tema, pero ahí hablamos un poquito sobre las defining and not defining clauses. Now, then we have to go back here because the other one is um, 5.2, it says, okay? 5.2, I'm going to come here. It's a knowledge check, right? Okay, it's a knowledge check and we're going to move to this fine point too. One second. There we go. Bye. So number one, it says complete the sentences possibly, uh, positively or negatively. Use the verse in parentheses alone with a model, no capital letters or periods are needed. So what about the first one? What do you think it's the answer? You already have it here, right? People shouldn't be allowed to use cell phones while driving or people should not be allowed to use cell phones while driving or people should be allowed to use cell phones while driving. So here the idea is for you to go ahead and decide, you know, um, if you are going to use the, the, that, that verb, right? In this case, allowed, or you can use the ones in parentheses, right? The ones, I'm sorry, in parentheses. So what about the first one, people? People what? Shouldn't be allowed. Shouldn't be allowed. Mm -hmm. Allowed. Mm -hmm. Very good, right? So in this case, you can say people shouldn't be allowed or should not be allowed or should be allowed. Now, based on your answer, right? What about the second one? Young people? Must not uh, be permitted. Permitted, right? Maybe. Okay, young people must not be permitted to get married before age 15. Very good. What about number three? 
Show be required. Show be required. Show be. Okay. For this one, we have, we have uh, three, three options. You can say ought to be required, should be required, or must be required, right? So the three options are okay. If you chose either or, so you're you are doing good, okay? Repito las opciones. Pueden ser ought to be required, or should be required, or must be required, okay? So in this case, let's continue using should, and we're going to say should be required, okay? What about the next one? What about the next one? People, blah, 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 to have pets okay. in high race apartments. People shouldn't have, shouldn't be. Okay. Allowed. Mm -hmm. Exactly, people shouldn't be allowed, right? People shouldn't be allowed to have pets in high rise apartments. Very good. What about number five, scientists? A mí me lo aceptó el A4 sin el not. Perdón? Uh, number four, in my case, is should be allowed. Es que son in las the tres. Platform, uh -huh. Son no, tres in the, in the fourth. Yep, in number four, the answers are these. Okay? You can say shouldn't be allowed, or you can say should be allowed, or should not be allowed. No, no, no. Le va a tomar las tres. Hay mm -hmm. alguno que no le haya tomado, o le falló alguna. No, o sea, no. que fue should be, uh -huh. no shouldn't ah, be. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, in that case, it is based on your um, opinion, right? Shouldn't be, should be, or should not be allowed. Mm -hmm. Then the next one, scientists, blah, 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 to use animals for research. What do you think? Shouldn't be allowed. Shouldn't be allowed. Okay, so in this case... Uh, Must not be. Okay, hmm. must not be. Very good. Mm -hmm. All must of be. those options, todas las opciones que escuché por ahí, están have to uh, have got to be permitted, porque es una versión eh, British, okay, inglés británico. O puede ser should not be permitted. Or you can say must not be permitted. Or you can say... Uh, shouldn't be permitted or should be permitted or must be permitted. So for number five, all of these are possible. In this case, I'm going to pick shouldn't be permitted or should not be permitted. What about number six, guys? Laws, blah, 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 to ban the sale of handguns. So what do you think is the, the answer? Must be passed. Must be, must be passed. Be. Okay. Must be, be passed. passed. Okay. Passed. Very good. So, or you can say must not be passed, depending on your opinion, right? Must be passed or must not be passed, okay? The sale of fur products, blah, 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 should be permitted should, shouldn't be permitted should not be permitted okay must uh, must not be permitted okay all, all of the answers are correct todas las que escuché por ahí okay so in this case, for example, I'm going to say the first one, shouldn't be permitted. But also you can say shouldn't be permitted, should be permitted, must be permitted, or must not be permitted, okay? What about number eight? Something, blah, 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 stop clubs from staying open in Salt Lake. What do you think? Should be done. Should be done. Mm -hmm. Exactly, right? So we're talking about 
a something that should be done. done. Mm -hmm. so let's go ahead and check. As you can see, all the answers hey, teacher, are correct. I have a question when in the in the number three, out, out, cuando dijo out to, esa, con out. Or be. Or be. Mm -hmm. Or be is the other option, right? Like the, um, it's kind of similar to have to, right? And I'm going to give you the, 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 the options. For number three, you have three different options. Okay. Creo que Rodrigo Antonio está escribiendo, solo espérame, vamos a borrar. Bye. Ahora sí, eh, the options for number three are this. Auto be required, should be required, or must be required. Auto, auto be required is similar a have to. Uh -huh. Okay, and uh, the pronunciation, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is auto. Or to be required. Mm -hmm. Or to be. Mm -hmm. okay. Correct. Okay. Any other question, guys? Questions? Okay. No questions. Let's continue then. Um, let me see. Over here. Uh, bueno, ya vimos 5.2. ¿Verdad? Y los ejercicios que todos lo vimos, ¿verdad? Es este. Vimos also the final exam y dice aquí el knowledge check de la parte 5. No sé si se referían a este, ¿verdad? O a este, o a este. No, este. no sé si hay alguna pregunta con respecto a los demás. No, teacher. No. Por el momento. Okay. Bye. Por el momento no. Entonces, I'm going to, I'm going to pass the attendance, ¿verdad? Mientras ahí buscan alguna pregunta que tengan o que les haga falta. Permítanme. I'm going to open, open the attendance. Eh, como son de los últimas. June is thirty first. Bye, chicos. Alba, dear Portal Díaz. Present. Thank you. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Here. Thank you. Ana Francisca García Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Antonio González Nuila. Present teacher. Thank you. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. Present. Thank you. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Here. Thank you. Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Um, Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Dina Esmeralda. Eh, Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Here. Thank you. Jenny Lizette Campos Martínez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Eh, José Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Thank you. José Francisco Peña Peña. Present. Thank you. José Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. José Jovito Torres Amaya. Present. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present teacher. Thank you. María Azucena Ayala de Flores. María Azucena. Eh, Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. 
present. Thank you. Give me a second, Marta. Marta Ruth, Enrique Reyes. Present. Thank you. Nady Ibis Mendez Albeño. Present, teacher. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present, teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Rebeca Estefanía Pereira Flores. Present. Thank you. Eh, Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. Present. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you. Jensi Marlene León López. Present, teacher. Thanks. Present, yes. sir. Thank you. And Zulma Beatriz Perez Caldames. Present. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Okay, you have already passed your attendance. So let's go back to the class. Okay, so eh, if we don't have more doubts, si ya no hay dudas con respecto a la plataforma, ¿verdad? Entonces continuamos siempre con parte de lo que hemos estado hablando, que es The Passive Voice, ¿verdad? Si de repente, pues, hizo falta algo, solo recuérdemelo. Just give me a second. Let me open the manual here too. And also a presentation. Bear with me, please. Let me un momento. Give me a second, guys. I'm looking for the presentation. Give me a second. Bueno, a moment, porque el segundo ya pasó. <laughs> It's loading, está cargando, permita. I need to remove this one from here. And I'm going to get the new one. Magicals. So let's go ahead and continue talking about the passive voice, okay? So let's see. Yesterday, um, we were talking about the idea, right? Or the use uh, or the usage of passive voice. And we were saying that the active voice, right? I mean, the, the subject of the active or the object, I'm sorry, of the active becomes the subject of the passive voice, right? And we're going to practice a little bit over here. Creo que yo les dije que les iba a mandar unos links, pero será muy probablemente hasta el día viernes, ¿verdad? Porque por el trabajo sí no he tenido, pero ni un ratito libre, right? Así que quiero buscar unos links para que ustedes practiquen, pero muy probablemente se los mande hasta el día viernes, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces tenemos aquí, pass it, boys, follow these steps to convert an active sentence into a pass it one. Yo sé que habían pedido links, pero aquí vamos a tener un, una serie de oraciones que las vamos a estar compartiendo de la activa a la pasiva. Ok, so here we have, it says follow these steps to convert, to convert an active sentence into a passive one. So the first one, what is the first step? Identify the verb and tense it. Intensities, ok entonces that's very important por eso el día de ayer yo les preguntaba ¿y cuál es el tense? ¿cuál es el tense con el que, con el que están trabajando? el que están viendo en el ejercicio right? because it is very important, extremely important to know 
what is the tense, if it's in present, if it's in past, or if it's in future, right? So here we have a sentence, Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. Okay, so what is the verb, guys? What is Inventor. the verb? Inventor. Very good. That is the verb, right? And what about the tense? Past. 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 Well, this is an active, es activa, por lo tanto está en past simple, okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. This is Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, okay? Now we know the following. What do we know? We know the verb and the verb is invented and we also know that it's in the past simple, okay? So we have we have applied the first step. Ya aplicamos el paso uno que es identify the verb and the tense it is in, okay? So now that we know the verb and that it is in simple past, what else do I need to know? Well, it says follow these steps, right? Follow these steps uh, to convert an active sentence into a passive one, okay? In this case, number two, it says identify the subject or the agent of the sentence. So, vamos a ver, what is the subject or the agent of the sentence? Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. Alexander Graham, Alexander Graham Bell. Correct. That is going to be the subject that we can take from the sentence. Okay, give me a second. One second, I'm still contestando in the chat. Very good. So we got the subject that is Alexander Graham Bell. So now with the first step, what was the first step? Who remembers? What was the first step? The first step was yes. the, the verb and the tense. In very, the tense. Very good. Excellent, guys. The first step is to identify the, uh, the verb and the tense. It is in, right? And then the second one is to identify the subject. We have already identified it. So now we know the following. We know the verb that is invented in the past simple. And we know the subject that is Alexander Graham Bell. But so far, hasta el momento, so far, we have just um, uh, read the active voice. Allí tenemos solo las voces activas, okay? So now, how can we move from the active to the passive? Bueno. The telephone was... I'm sorry? The telephone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell. Yes, that is the object, right? So we need to identify the object. Eh, dígame, Patricia, thank you so much, Jenny. Tenía pregunta, Patricia. Sandra, Patricia. No, iba a responder, pero... Ah, <laughs> okay, excellent, okay. Identify the object of the verb, right? So the object is... The telephone. The telephone, that is correct. So that is the third step, to identify the object of the verb. Good job. So step number one, we identify the verb and the tense it is in. Step number two, we identify the subject who is Alexander Graham Bell. And number three, we needed to find the object of the sentence that in this case is the telephone, okay? So after those three steps, we are ready to make up sentences in the passive voice. Ya estamos listos para la voz pasiva, right? Después de esos tres pasos. Entonces, ayer les había explicado ya que la voz, eh, perdón, que el sujeto de la voz activa se convierte en el objeto de la voz pasiva, ¿ok? So we have here the active Alexander Graham Bell invented the phone. We got the subject or the agent the past simple and the object, and our object becomes the subject. El objeto se convierte en sujeto. So the telephone, luego pues necesitamos la oración en past simple, por lo tanto necesito was, 
right? And then, right, use the verb form, uh, the verb form, I'm sorry, the active sentence in the past participle form, right? So in that case, the telephone was invented. Solamente teacher, sí, puedo poner el, 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 el um, agente. Si usted quiere, puede ponerlo, no hay problema, right? But eh, no va a ser gran diferencia porque solo hay una persona que inventó pues, el teléfono. Eh, most likely people will know that it's Alexander Graham Bell. Entonces, ahí tenemos, ¿verdad? The telephone was invented. Ahora sí podemos agregar el subject, ¿verdad? The telephone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell. Aquí está the new subject, que es el objeto de la oración. Object from active sentence, then verb B. Past participle. And we got our sentence in just seven simple steps, okay? Do you have any questions? Do you have any doubts about it? Any questions, guys? Está claro como el agua, como la horchata. ¿Cómo lo vemos? Yes. In the passive voice, in this case, there are two subjects. Are there two subjects? No. No, in this case, uh, we have two different things. In the first one, okay. Um, something that we need to remember, and I'm going to go back here, okay, is that we, when we're talking about the passive voice, the object of the active sentence becomes the subject. O sea, en esta oración, en la activa, tengo Alexander Graham Bell, ¿verdad? Invented the telephone. The subject, el sujeto de la voz activa, se convierte en un agente. Un agente en la voz pasiva es aquella eh, que ejecuta esa acción, ¿verdad? Entonces, prácticamente el sujeto de la voz pasiva es el objeto de la voz activa. Entonces, no es que tenga dos sujetos, sino que cumplen dos funciones diferentes. El objeto se convierte en el sujeto de la oración pasiva. Luego, tengo el verbo. ¿verdad? Y por último, tengo a el agente. El agente es el que lo inventó. By Alexander Graham Bell. ¿verdad? Entonces, no es en sí que tengamos dos objects, sino que están cumpliendo eh, funciones diferentes dentro de cada una de sus oraciones. En el caso de la activa, el, el, el nombre Alexander Graham Bell es el, el sujeto y en la voz pasiva, ese Alexander Graham Bell ya no es sujeto, sino que es un agente. ¿De acuerdo? Y en la voz activa, ese objeto de telephone ya no eh, se queda ahí, sino que pasa a la voz pasiva como sujeto. No sé si respondo su, su pregunta. Yes. Excellent. You you're, you're welcome anytime. Anyone else? Questions? Teacher. Yes. In the passive boy, we use the all, all time, todos los tiempos. Yes, that is correct. Um, it can be in any tense. Puede estar en cualquier tense, ¿verdad? And all what you need todo lo que va a necesitar, bueno, aparte de la estructura gramatical de la que se va a estar hablando, you need verb B, eh, plus eh, past participle. Oops, past participle. Ok, that's what you need. Esto es lo que necesitamos, ¿de acuerdo? Media vez nosotros tengamos este verb B and the past participle of the verb. So there we have the passive voice. Uh -huh. No sé si contesto su pregunta, perdón. Mm, más o menos me confundí. Guay, eh, vaya, dígame un ejemplo. Mm, my mom, my mom did the, the breakfast. Bye. En este caso sería el verbo make, ¿verdad? Sería oh, okay. made, ajá. So, my mom. My mom made breakfast. No the breakfast, porque recordemos que the 
es un artículo definido. Cuando yo lo utilizo es porque estoy hablando de algo específico. Por ejemplo, my mom, me, my mom made the, um, the best breakfast. Right? Ahí sería ya con, eh, eh, usándolo en modo superlativo, ¿verdad? O oh, my mom made the, um, what? the birthday breakfast right? for my sister. O el, el, el desayuno de cumpleaños, por decirlo así. Right? Entonces quitamos ese T and we say my mom made breakfast. Bye. Entonces vamos a ir aplicando todos los pasos acá. Y el primer paso, eh, Rosa María, creo que fue. ¿Cuál era el primer paso? Uh -huh. Identify the subject. Muy bien. So, what is the subject? My mom. Muy bien. Vámonos aquí con my mom. Sorry. Muy bien. ¿Cuál es el segundo? Identify Pero me, creo que me verb. salté el verb. primero. Ajá. Vaya, the verb. Ok, what is the verb? May. Ok, ¿y cuál es el tense? The object. Breakfast. No, ¿cuál es el tense? El verbo es may. Uh -huh. ¿Y el eh, tense? Simple past. Past, muy bien. Ok, simple past. Ok. Muy bien. Entonces ya tenemos acá tres, me falta uno, ya tengo el verb y el tense, ya tengo el subject, ahora me falta el object. ¿Cuál sería el objeto de esta oración que usted me dio a mí? Breakfast. Muy bien, correcto. Ok, so that is the object. Breakfast. No, es minúscula. Breakfast. Ok, muy bien. Entonces ahí tenemos todos los elementos, ¿verdad? Y ya me vengo acá a buscarle la posición a cada uno de ellas. Entonces me dice acá que el object becomes the subject. Entonces vamos a poner acá breakfast, right? Breakfast. Ok, luego me dice que como el tense está en pasado, well. que necesito el verbo, en este caso singular, verbo tu bien pasado, was. Y luego me dice que necesito el pasado participio. Ok, entonces, breakfast was made. made. Luego me dice que si yo quiero, puedo incluir a la gente, ¿verdad? Oh. O sea, esa persona que eh, hizo esa acción, ¿verdad? By my mother. Oops, by my mother. Ok, y ahí tengo la oración. New subject. Breakfast, aquí falta una acá. Verb B, was. Verb in past participle, made. And the agent, by my mother. ¿Ok? Entonces, eso es en pasado. Ahora hagamos lo mismo con otro tense. Deme otro ejemplo, Rosa María. Que no sea en pasado. Vamos a quitarle todo acá. Dígame uno al azar. My sister go to the school. No, pero sería con, con un objeto. Por ejemplo, algo en el algo en futuro. Okay. Por ejemplo, puedo decir algo como my classmates. My classmates will celebrate. My birthday. Ok. My classmates will celebrate my birthday. ¿Cuál es el verb? Celebrate. 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 Ok. ¿Cuál es el tense? Future. Present. It's future. Y con future estamos usando future, uh, simple future. Ok. Simple future. Y estamos usando will. Ok. ¿Cuál es el subject? My classmates. Classmate. Muy bien, my classmates. Ok. And the object? My birthday. My birthday. Muy bien. Entonces, basados en lo que acabamos de ver, diríamos... 
My birthday. Muy bien. My birthday. Ajá. Uh -huh. Will celebrate by my class. Vaya, ahí, ahí. Will. Pero luego de will, ¿cuál es el otro elemento que yo voy a necesitar? Porque will es parte sí. del tense. Ah, will muy be. bien, muy bien. Necesito el verbo to be. Will be what? Necesito ahora el pasado participio del verbo. Celebrate. Celebrate. Celebrated. My birthday will be celebrated. And then necesito la gente. ¿Cuál sería? By my, my classmates. By my classmates. Muy bien. Excelente. Y ahí tienen la oración en futuro. My birthday will be celebrated by my classmates. Ok. Entonces recordemos que la voz activa. ¿Verdad? Eh, lo que yo tengo que identificar es ese objeto, porque ese objeto es el que se va a convertir en el sujeto de la oración. Right? Entonces, así vamos a poder seguir con pasado, presente, futuro, cualquiera de los tenses. ¿Verdad? Vamos a poder aplicar los pasos y vamos a poder eh, armar nuestras oraciones de activa a pasiva. No sé si hay alguna pregunta todavía. ¿Questions? No se queden con sus dudas, ¿verdad? Si tienen preguntas. Eh, teacher, ¿y when, when is, is a question? Mm -hmm. It's the same. The only difference is that it will uh, follow the question pattern. Deme un ejemplo. What is your birthday, Bruce? What is your birthday? Pero ¿cuál sería el objeto ahí? Ajá, porque ese verbo to be. Ajá. ¿Alguien más que tenga un ejemplo con pregunta? ¿Alguien? Uh -huh. um, I don't know if it's correct. Say, say, uh, when my birthday will be celebrated. Ok, muy bien. When, oops, sorry. When will my birthday, birthday, my birthday, uh, when my birthday will be celebrated, right? Celebrated. Muy bien. Correcto. Ahí tenemos voz pasiva dentro de una pregunta. When will my birthday be celebrated, right? ¿Cuándo va a ser mi cumpleaños celebrado? Uh -huh. Correct. Entonces, eh, If you see, we are following the, 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 the question pattern. Usted me puede decir, teacher, pero el verbo to be no va a la par del will. No, porque esta es una pregunta. ¿Verdad? Cuando tenemos preguntas, primero van el WH word o WH phrase. Luego va el auxiliary. Auxiliary. Luego va este um, subject. ¿Verdad? Y luego va el complement, ¿verdad? Si es que tenemos, no, per perdón, el verb y luego el complement. Entonces, eso es en general una pregunta con will. WH word, si es que hay, y si no, pues solo comenzamos con auxiliary, luego subject, luego verb y luego complement. Entonces, aplico la, el mismo orden porque es una pregunta, pero la pregunta incluye el, eh, um, la passive voice, ¿verdad? Muy bien, exacto. Eso es el único detalle con, con, con las preguntas, chicos, que tiene que llevar la forma de pregunta también. Uh -huh. Any other question? Preguntas? Sure. Bueno, pues. Entonces, me alegra que, que vayamos comprendiendo mejor lo que es la voz pasiva. No sé si ustedes recuerdan ayer que les comentaba, parece complicado, pero no lo es. Todo lo que tenemos que hacer es seguir los pasos. Right? Dos steps that you need to follow. ¿Verdad? Entonces, vámonos acá a los pasos nuevamente. Y revisemos, repasemos, ¿verdad? Entonces, el primer paso es identify the verb and the tense. ¿Verdad? Entonces el tense, perdón, el verb y el tense son importantes para saber cómo voy a usar, usar yo el verbo to be y el pasado participio que yo sé que siempre va a estar ahí, ¿verdad? 
Luego en el paso número dos, we identify the subject or the agent. Dice subject and agent porque en realidad es el subject de la activa, pero es el agent de la pasiva. Entonces en este caso identifico lo que es el subject, ¿verdad? Y number three, I identify the object of the sentence, right? Entonces recordemos que los objetos contestan a la pregunta, el qué. Alexander Graham Bell invented. What did he invent? Ah, he invented the telephone. Entonces, los objetos responden a la pregunta, ¿qué? ¿Qué hizo? ¿Verdad? Entonces, Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. Luego que ya tengo el objeto, ahora, ¿verdad? Ya tengo tres elementos. Verb, tense, subject, and object. Ok, and then ya con toda esa información, ¿verdad? Vengo yo y empiezo a transformar de activa a pasiva. Entonces, como yo sé que el objeto de la a, activa se convierte en el sujeto de la pasiva, solo lo transpongo. Luego, pues, necesito el, la, la voz pasiva y tengo un verbo en pasado. Por lo tanto, necesito el verbo to be en pasado junto con el pasado participio. Y al final... Incluyo el agente si es necesario, ¿verdad? Y ahora pues tengo los cuatro elementos que yo voy a necesitar para la voz pasiva. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces, si no hay más preguntas, chicos, voy a pasar asistencia. Ok, give me a second. Give me a second. Aquí está. Vaya chicos, ya el día de mañana igual vamos a seguir, pero solamente quería este, completar este tema hoy porque ya mañana vamos a, a, a continuar con los otros temas que nos hacen falta de la sección 4, ¿ok? Eh, Alba Dir por tal día. Here, teacher. Thank you. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present. Thank you. Ana Francisca García Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Antonio González Nuila. Present teacher. Thank you. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutiérrez. Here. Thank you. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Eh, Here. Thank, you. thank you, Claudia. Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Eh, give me a second. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present. Thank you. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Eh, Jenny Lisset Campos Martínez. Present. Thank you. José Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present. Teacher. Thank you. José Francisco Peña Peña. José Isaías. Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. Eh, José Jovito Torres Amaya. Present. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present teacher. Thank you. María Azucena Ayala de Flores. Give me a moment. Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Present. Thank you. Marta Ruth Enriquez Reyes. Present. Thank you. Nady Ibis Mendez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you. Rebeca Estefanía Pereira Flores. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Marino Moreno. Present. Thank you, Jensi Marleni León López. Present, teacher. Thank you, and Sulma Beatriz Pérez Caldames. I'm here. Thank you very much. No se me quedó nadie, ¿verdad? Ok, 
que a veces me dice, señor, pues no la mencioné, ¿verdad? Entonces, vaya right, chicos, very good. Entonces, uh, that was the list. And um, as I said before, tomorrow we will continue. Así que thank you very much for joining today. And let's meet tomorrow. Ah, write down the exercise. Si tiene preguntas, escriba o así como hicieron hoy en el chat, ¿verdad? Solo manden el número del ejercicio y pues con gusto aquí lo venimos a revisar en clase. Así que good night, guys. Have a wonderful evening. And let's meet tomorrow, okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys.